four community health workers were there, we had a challenge. As a community, we could move a long distance to get the services. And at times when you go to the health facility, there is no medicine. So you end up going to the clinic and not everyone in the community can afford money to go to the clinic. So when this program came of community health workers, in fact, it helped a lot. As community health workers were trained, after being trained, we were supplied. And now we can do the services. We are treating children under five. We are visiting the pregnant mothers. We are doing nutrition assessment, which was not there at first. Around the world, millions of community health workers are working without recognition, without pay. 70% uh, of, those, of those community health workers are, are women. You have people who are being exploited. On the one hand, they either leave or they are working without pay, hours and hours and hours and hours a week. If they do leave, then the patients are going without care. And as a consequence, we're in a world now where a billion people go their entire lives without ever seeing a health worker. Community Health Impact Coalition is a team of community health workers in 60 countries around the world who've come together to make professional community health workers the norm by changing guidelines, funding, and policy. Nama Wellness was established in 2014 as a health center, a community-based health center, basically offering primary health care services. And so that attracted a big number of, of women from the community. But the biggest part of it was when we joined Sheik and designed a community health workers program based on the Sheik Aid principles. We are the doctors in the community. We are very crucial in the work of the community. I do follow ups where necessary. I treat and refer children under five years for malaria, pneumonia, and diarrhea. I do family planning also, but we know through training we can be professional CHWs. So as CHIC, it's an umbrella of CHWs globally to make a professional community health workers a reality. This advocacy course is made up of six modules. You will get to know how to use the digital tools and join others globally. A community health worker will learn, A, you're not alone. You're not just off in a far off village by yourself. Uh, you're actually part of a whole community of community health workers from around the world, stretching back over time and into the future. So we need to come together and fight for a good working environment as CHW. There's a, a really serious health worker shortage um, that's actually getting worse. And the WHO says we're going to be short as a globe, like 17 million health workers by, by 2030. So folks need care. Uh, we need people. And I think community health workers have really been able to step into that gap. And the biggest provider of health care in most places is the government. We have also made it clear to government partners and implementing partners that as a country, if we are to change the status quo from curative to promotive and preventive, uh, as a country, we have taken a decision that community health workers is the way to go. We've seen that community health workers can actually increase access to basic health care services. They can increase and promote equity in the community. We're living in a, in a digital world, right? And the, the temptation is always to say, oh, let's fix that with an app or a drone or something. And these tools are amazing, right? And they, they can really support us in, in reaching more people more easily. Um, at the same time, I think people know pretty intuitively that you trust your neighbor more than you trust the internet. So we need to advocate to, to get you know more money, better spent on professional CHWs, but in order to, to make that kind of global reality, a reality for every community health worker in every country, that's where these networks come in. We don't want community health workers to be exploited because they cannot stand up for themselves. Let's get community health workers in the room uh, and let's establish that unified voice. And they're not just speaking for themselves, 
They're speaking for 700. They're speaking for 7,000. They're speaking for 70,000. Now we're really getting somewhere. I look forward to standing alongside you as we change the health system in Uganda. Our voices have been missing, but now, the more we advocate, the more we'll be getting that change we are crying for. Once they speak, they're always the most powerful speaker in the room because they have that authority, they have that legitimacy, that credibility, and they have the insight that, that nobody else has because they're on the front lines every single day. When we bring together CHWs and we all have the same voice and use the same voice to, to advocate at national level, then we believe that these changes will be seen. I'm really proud of obviously what we've achieved together as a team. I think so much of both the research and then the, the advocacy has changed how people think about community health workers. Like if you hear 86% of community health workers are unsalaried, that's chic research. Salaried, supervised, skilled, supplied, produces better outcomes, that's chic. Your Our goal is to see 95 countries recognize and pay CHWs. And what we're seeing is a, is a rapid acceleration just over the last five years in terms of the number of countries who are making this switch. We're, you know, just over a third of the way there. It's 60 countries to go. And uh, I think we're on, we're on track to, to hit that tipping point really, really soon. To win that commitment is so important because it's, it's someone finally saying, you're right, you're worth a lot. It's time for CHWs to take our seat, to sit with the decision makers and the policy makers, because each and everything starts in the community where we are and end the community where we serve.